When my sister and I were kids, we each had a dollhouse. Originally, my dollhouse, which I will be making over in this video, was made for my sister by my dad, because she's the older sister by four and a half years. So I think the house was built before I was even born. But then, at some point, when I wasn't all that old, my sister inherited a dollhouse from a family member that passed away, along with like furniture kits and stuff. So my parents thought it was only fair to give me her old dollhouse, and my dad even made it over for me. I don't really remember much of what it looked like originally, so this will be its like second makeover. I'm pretty sure it wasn't painted at all and it had some kind of carpeting in it. So my dad painted it for me and did some designs on it and even though my sister had the fancier dollhouse, we both tended to play more with mine because it had an open layout and although it definitely was not sized for Barbies, it was more 1 12th scale and Barbies are 1 6th scale. We used it all the time. It made so many memories with that dollhouse. One of the uh, most vivid memories I have in my mind is we, we had this game called Boarding House where we played with a lot of our kid core dolls and Colleen made one of my Kelsey's a mermaid in secret and she'd use school photographer Becky's wheelchair and like a blanket to cover up the mermaid tail and this was a game that we really enjoyed and we used the little cutout windows in the house as like a laundry chute. Um, and we also used it when we collected trolls as kids, and that's where our trolls lived, and I'm pretty sure it was um, one of her dolls' bedrooms at some point. So my house got a lot of use. My sister's house, it belonged to a woman that was friends with my family, and I'm not really sure why she had it, but we believe she also had like furniture kits for it and stuff. And when Colleen had it, it was in her room and she would keep like her Madeline doll in it and um, a few of her McDonald's figurines. We never really had like dolls that were the appropriate scale for either of her dollhouses. But then when my grandmother moved in, in the fall of 2000, um, we all moved downstairs into my basement. If you've watched my house tour, then you've seen like how our basement's partially finished. So we wanted my grandmother to have like the whole upstairs when we moved downstairs, my dad took apart Colleen's dollhouse and it wasn't assembled again until we were adults. And when we went to assemble it, um, I realized it was missing a floor panel. So somewhere in like the shuffle of us moving downstairs, a floor panel went missing. So all of this leads up to the fall of 2017 when we were cleaning out the last part of our basement and there was this random piece of wood in one of the things I was cleaning out and I was just going to like put it in the kindling pile and my sister said that's the floor of my dollhouse and so when we realized that it was indeed the floor of the dollhouse this kind of spurred me to think about our two childhood dollhouses and how they had kind of been neglected and how I wanted to fix them up so in this video I'm going to be painting my childhood dollhouse that my dad built and I'm going to be finishing some furniture kits that my sister had for her dollhouse as well as repairing some of the pre-existing furniture she had. So my Pepe, he had started making some of these, um, it's from the early 80s, they were like build, buildable dollhouse furniture kits where you'd punch them out and glue them together. I'm not really sure where this kit came from. We think it was with the dollhouse because it's like from the early 80s. I'm not really sure but he had started building it but then my Pepe um, had cancer and passed away when I was six so he never finished those kits for my sister and my dad was supposed to but he always started projects and never finished them so it was really important to me to finish the kits that my Pepe started. I meant to say this, but part of why it was really important to me to finish what my Pepe started is because my sister was extremely close to my Pepe. This is a picture of them when she was really little with Mr. Potato Head. Um, he was one of the most important people in her life, and when he died, like, that was a huge deal for her. And obviously I loved my Pepe too, but I was really young and I kind of always felt like a third wheel hanging out with them. So, you know, and I had a really close relationship with my dad so 
I feel like Pepe was kind of her person and, you know, sadly he didn't live to be around for most things in her life. So I really wanted to start what he wanted to do for her. And um, Colleen was really appreciative of the fact that, like, this was the same kit that my Pepe had been working on and now we can actually use it for our dolls. Colleen kind of let me have, like, free range to decorate them how I wanted. She just wanted them to be finished. So I started this project back in 2017. There's, I think, an episode of Dolly Diaries from that fall where I have some footage of me gluing the pieces together. But I was going through a lot at the time and I got really frustrated <laughs> with trying to assemble them. So I stopped and this project stalled out for six years until December of 2023. So some of the earlier footage in this video when I'm fixing her furniture, that is all from December and the rest of it is from 2024. So I would work on this in increments and I'm not by any means skilled at miniature doll creations so I was kind of just like winging it. Then I, I did have a lot of fun with the painting process though because that was what I was most looking forward to. So that's the backstory of this project and um, just a disclaimer, I am not a miniature doll artist. I am sure I did a lot of things wrong. Um, I just, like I said, tried to wing it and tried to get the stuff assembled. Um, part of the problem I had with these old furniture kits was that I didn't have all the instructions, so I didn't realize that there was a page that had everything numbered. And so I was just like basically blindly trying to assemble very similar looking pieces of wood. So some of it got assembled wrong. Some of it just like broke when being punched out. Um, it definitely wasn't like the highest quality set. So if you're watching this and you're somebody who is a miniature enthusiast who's like really skilled at this, I know I'm doing it all wrong and I apologize. <laughs> um, I do have pictures of these things on my Flickr um, and I'll be adding more at some point too if you're interested. Um, but yeah, these, these things are very close to me and my sister's hearts and I'm just super excited that we were we were finally able to like use them and they have new life breathed into them. And my doll and dolls are going to be the primary owners of both of our doll houses because they are like the perfect size. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So in these clips, I am repairing the old furniture that my Pepe largely assembled. Some of these pieces were like from pre-built dollhouse sets, but a lot of them were from a like punch-out set that you had to like glue together and assemble, which my Pepe had put together when he was alive. And some of the pieces had been broken since we were kids because they were just pretty delicate. So, for instance, the throne thing, I don't remember what kind of chair it is, but that very tall backed chair, the arms were gone, so I just trimmed off the nubs that were left to make it look a little bit cleaner, but fortunately, um, that red chair I did earlier still had the other side to it, which had been off since we were kids, and like the bed frame still had the headboard. Um, one of them the ice box, I think it is. The hinge was broken and I didn't have another one to replace it so I just glued the top on because it really wasn't that big of a deal to me. And that was also the oil lamp that had broken that I was fixing with hot glue. And with this sink, I think it is, the leg was missing the other one so I just removed the existing one so that it could lay flatly instead of being at an angle. I 
I had to get a little creative with repairing this cradle and a toy chest you'll see in a minute. This was missing the like pins that went through that enabled it to rock back and forth. So I took sewing pins that had like large enough balls on the end to hold in the place and then I bent the wire around the edge of the cradle to, so it was secure and then here I used sewing pins with like little flat metal tops as replacement nail things for the hinge that had come off you'll see I'm gonna shove them through and then I trimmed them on the inside and then the other hinge was missing the pin that went through it so I did the same technique I did on the cradle where I slid the pin through the little slot and then I folded it over to keep it in place. I know this isn't like the proper way to do it, but I was just using what I had and this stuff is like really old and I don't think it was good quality to begin with. So my sister had some surviving metal accessories, like dishware mainly, and some fireplace accessories. She must have gotten these secondhand, and some of them have tarnished. I didn't have a lot of vinegar on hand. I needed to stop at the store and buy more, so I just used what I had left. But I used baking soda to scrub off as much of the buildup as I could, and then I soaked them in vinegar, and I also added a little baking soda into the vinegar because it foams and... I don't know, in my experience it's worked getting off all of that like corrosion. I used this for my Cabbage Patch soft sculpture doll, Baby Otis. He comes with a metal duck rattle and it was completely tarnished when I got it on eBay. And I did this technique and it made it completely shiny and nice again. My dad used to use this method for cleaning coins and I don't know, it works. And I always have vinegar and baking soda on hand, but this was only my first round. Some of these were more tarnished than others, and because I didn't have a lot of baking soda, um, sorry, I didn't have a lot of vinegar, I wasn't able to do as thorough of a job, but I thought I'd include this clip because it's a really great hack. I also use this to get corrosion off of my sister's Molly doll's glasses. Here I am assembling a few of these rocking chairs. There were two of them that were still in their bags, miraculously, after all of these years. My Pepe had assembled three of them, and years ago my sister had actually taken one to use with her kid Cor Katie doll, and had like used permanent marker to decorate it. So that was kind of my inspiration for assembling these, and you'll see later when I paint them. But they were kind of annoying to assemble. It was pretty straightforward, even without directions, but the legs had to be put in at such a particular angle in order to fit into the seat. So I had to play around with that. I edited out uh, all of that footage of me struggling, but that was really the only tricky part. The rest of it went super smoothly and the first chair I assembled came out slightly crooked because of all the trouble I was having, but the second chair came out much, much better. Um, not as nice as the way my Pepe assembled them, but they're still very usable and they're definitely not one, one twelfth scale. They're bigger than that, not big enough for a Barbie, but good for like a Stacy sized doll, which Kid Core Katie is a clone of Stacy. So um, I was really excited to assemble them and really grateful that the non-assembled ones were still in the bags that they were sold in because if they hadn't been, I wouldn't have had all these tiny parts and even though, like I said, I didn't have directions and the bags didn't have any kind of label on them, I had pre-assembled ones that my Pepe had put together as sort of a frame of reference. I assembled the rest of these punch-out sheets of plywood furniture that my Pepe had never gotten around to. Um, I did the best I could. I'll explain more in depth later about all the issues I had with that, but these are really cheaply made and the 
edges were super rough and I should have sanded them while assembling before gluing the pieces together but I had never done anything like this before and it wasn't until I was looking up some like YouTube videos that I noticed people doing that to make the fit better but YOLO <laughs> it was too late so I went around and I sanded after um, sometimes the sanding actually caused the plywood to start flaking so I had to be really careful about that I did not film myself sanding all the pieces that would have been super redundant just this one piece but there were quite a few to sand Painting all this furniture was easily my favorite part because I love to paint. However, this neon paint needed many coats and I knew that going into it. I decided not to like prime any of these because sometimes that makes certain colors more difficult to build up opacity. I don't know. I paint a lot of wooden doll stands that I make, so that was my experience. But I wanted these to be kind of obnoxious. I know they're tacky, but I was basing them off of Kid Cora Katie artwork from boxes, which I'll show later. But um, I decided to do all of these specifically for Colleen's Katie dolls, and it was a lot of fun. I'm not a um, tasteful person when it comes to accessorizing my dolls. I decided to do each rocking chair two-toned and I also made the decision to paint the bottom of the chair the same color as the legs because otherwise trying to make it like the same blue for instance as the upper part it would have been a nightmare because it's kind of difficult painting in all of these small spaces so I didn't have to worry about you know the paint getting where it wasn't supposed to and the regular matte acrylic paints were far easier to work with I only had to do two coats of them to get like full opacity which I wasn't surprised with because again I paint a lot of wooden stands and these paints they're a cheap brand but they're really easy to work with um, and usually I only have to do two coats I also should mention that what I decided to do is because there was a lot of furniture to paint I would pick like things for instance all these rocking chairs and I would paint like three to four items at once that way I could do like a coat on one move to the next do a coat there and obviously because these are rocking chairs I couldn't paint the actual like rockers on the bottom until the paint had dried better because you can see that's where I'm handling it and it sits on the cardboard so I had to wait until the paint was dry enough to sort of like lay it in a different position in order for the rockers to dry without like the paint peeling and it was important with the neon paints especially to make sure each coat was fully dry otherwise it would pull up like the the next layer I was putting down would pull up the first and that was really annoying but it wasn't a problem with these regular matte paints, which I know it's neon green, <laughs> it's really tacky, but I love how these ended up turning out. Um, and I wanted them to be really groovy looking, kind of not just inspired by Kid Katie, but also by my, my American girl Julie, who is from the 70s. I really love that sort of like, you know, retro look. So after I finished painting each rocking chair and making sure that they were fully dry, I went over them with this gloss varnish. I could have used matte and maybe some people would have preferred matte, but gloss tends to protect things better and these are going to be stored away and used for photos, so I wanted them to be super durable, especially because I slaved over these flower designs. I had to keep making a lot of adjustments and fixing little mistakes. There's a lot of nooks and crannies too on these chairs so painting them was tedious and building up enough layers of these neon colors There were a lot of these punch out furniture pieces despite the fact that some weren't salvageable or there weren't all the pieces for me to assemble them and that being the case I didn't want to film me painting 
every single item that would get really tedious because it's just me slapping paint on and doing designs. So I kind of filmed selectively and also I don't know about other people on YouTube who paint so daintily with like fancy nail art and nice looking hands but I make a mess. Like I got it in my hair, I got it on my clothes, I got it on the table despite the cardboard piece I was using as a mat. So I didn't prime the majority of these pieces ahead of time because I don't mind the way the wood kind of soaks through and alters the colors because when I paint doll stands and I use like baseboard I get the same effect. There were a few areas you can see like I spot treated. Um, when I was assembling these I found someone on eBay had the sheet I was missing from the instructions that actually had like the whole punch out cards and the numbered pieces because the pieces weren't labeled so I was able to zoom in and read some of those pieces and I wrote on the items like what piece went to what but unfortunately the pencil didn't show up so I did this in pen without thinking that this would be difficult to paint over so I did like this mixture of white with a little bit of purple and that cancelled out the ink and it hasn't shown through so that's what that patch was about. Unlike with the flowers I painted on the rocking chairs, I didn't use a paintbrush and paint for the flowers. I decided to use paint marker because it would be easier and I could get into tight spaces with it. I did of course need to go over the flowers a few times and do touch-ups. And I did the centers of the flowers um, in the same paint colors that I used for the base of the furniture. I just alternated it. So on the red parts here, I would put blue centers, but that wasn't too hard to do with a paintbrush. I just figured it would be more um, useful of my time and less difficult to use a paint marker. And it worked out for the most part. I mean, sometimes the flow wouldn't be consistent and might come out streaky or pool, but that's sort of the nature of using paint pens. And of course, to protect all of my work and to make these pieces just feel nicer, I went over everything I painted with two coats of gloss sealer. Gloss usually protects things more than matte. Um, so yeah, it's shiny and that might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I spent a lot of time painting and assembling these and I wanted it to last, especially because these pieces will be stored away for a lot of the time unless they're coming out for photos. So I knew that they might be bumping up against each other in the drawer and I wanted to make sure that my work didn't get all chipped. So this is the inside of my dollhouse. My dad had like painted it all white when it was first given to me and it has been like wiped down but obviously years of being played with, stored, and probably like my dad's haste to get this done. You can see that it definitely needs some updating on the inside and the little basement area here. On the sides, my dad did these cute little hearts. He used to always draw hearts like these on like notes he'd give me or like if he made something for me. And this is all done with permanent marker. And the other side looks exactly the same. And then here we have the front. You can see he did like a little design at the top. And I guess this is sort of like, supposed to be almost like our living room window where it's like a big bay window. Then we have um, all the shingles, which part of why this looks so dirty is because the graphite from the pencil rubbed off. And this is the opposite side, which this one has like, looks like maybe a little water damage or something. That must be really old because it's not wet and it was wrapped up in a bag downstairs. I did make my best effort to erase the graphite shingles, but I don't know if it's because they had been there so long or if my dad sealed over it or whatever, but I couldn't erase it. So I just decided, you know what, I'll paint over it and it'll preserve my dad's work. I 
had to do multiple coats over the whole house. I was just using regular acrylic paint for this. So the shingles are very noticeable here, but by the end, when I've done, I don't know, maybe four to five coats, they're faint, which I didn't mind. I still wanted there to be shingles, but because I was putting a design over top, I didn't want them to be striking. So again, I had to do this many, many times, and my dad did use permanent marker as like outlines for the windows and the door and also for the hearts, but I was okay with this because I wanted to see what he did so I could paint over it with like a new color because I do want this to preserve some of its like original character because, you know, my dad passed away back in 2012 and you know, I don't have like loads of things that he made me anymore, so this house is really special, but I also wanted to still give it some new life and make it groovy and give it like these bright colors, so I wasn't too worried about like the permanent marker peeking through because it was just a guideline. And of course, like my dad's work wasn't perfect, so that will reflect in the final um, tracing of it too. But I do like how it came out and that it still looks like my dollhouse. So the inside was pretty gross looking, so I had to paint over it, and originally I was going to just use some, like, house paint, but it was very expensive at the store, like, the price has gone up astronomically since last time I bought any, and I just figured, you know, I have a lot of, like, white acrylic paint that's kind of getting old, so I'll start with that and then I'll just buy another bottle of it, and that worked out great because the original jar that I was finishing off had gotten super thick and chunky, and it was perfect coverage for the dollhouse, but not so great for other things. And you'll note that I had moved positions off the dining room table. I am still working on the cardboard, but this enabled me so I could flip it around and access all of the areas. And this is what I mean about flipping it around, because I wanted to paint the inside and also the bottoms of the floors, because even though they wouldn't be highly visible, I thought I wanted to do this correctly, I didn't want to skimp. I even did the like window ledges because you can see there's like about a quarter inch of wood around the edges but I went back and I did that on a different occasion and you can see this was after one coat I only did one coat for the underside but for everything else I did a few until it was nice and opaque So once again, I busted out the paint markers to do flowers on the roof and also all around the house. I know it's a lot of work, but this was my vision. I also had to go around and do multiple coats, especially on the yellow, because it looks really opaque here, but it wasn't up close. And I didn't film a lot of this because it's just tedious, like me cleaning up, me moving flowers. There was a whole side of the house I decided I didn't like, so I ended up basically redoing it. But I only filmed parts of this painting process because I did it over the span of like a week whenever I had the time and different lighting. As you can see here, it was like pretty dark out when I started on the roof. So this is all of the furniture that I painted completed. We have these really cute rocking chairs, which I did have to assemble a few of them. I did designs on the back and front, and they're, everything is sealed with a few layers of gloss sealer just to protect it. And on these chairs, I mostly used um, just like my paint and paintbrush for the flowers, except on the um, last chair I did, which was this one. <laughs> then I decided to try using the paint pens. And for the rest of the furniture, I used the paint pens for the flowers. So I kind of paired the, like, two different tones with white flowers. And then you can see, like, depending on where the flowers were, I would flip what color the centers were. And I decided to paint them in 
themes by room. So like the living room type furniture I did in red and blue and then all the kitchen type ones I did in a brighter blue and orange and then everything bedroom related I did with purple and green. And then there were nine of these chairs and I did them as like a watermelon theme which hadn't been my original intent but when I painted them they kind of reminded me of watermelons. I mean I know that the pink part should have the seeds but that was just how I painted them. And the reason there are nine chairs is because this set was supposed to come with a dining room table, a kitchen table, so there'd be four chairs each, and then there's a desk um, that my Pepe assembled that's not in this group, and one of the chairs goes to that. So um, these are supposed to have, like, you're supposed to put fabric on them to give them cushions, but I didn't. I just decided to paint it all and do really groovy colors, and then obviously because of how old the set was, um, like this sink is supposed to have a backsplash, Oops. but I don't have it. There's like a little cabinet here that I'm not really sure what it was supposed to be. Like I think it's supposed to be mounted on like the wall of the dollhouse. And we have the sideboard. And then this corner cabinet, which this was really hard to assemble. You can kind of see gaps in it, but Colleen wanted me to paint it anyways. This is a little stove. None of these drawers open, but you could in theory have made them that way. And there's this little shelf. And then we have all of the bedroom furniture, which Colleen says this color scheme is her favorite. So this is actually just made from leftover random pieces I had. Um, so like the base of it was supposed to be for a dresser, but then I added on this like flat top just so that um, there would be like another piece of furniture. There's this cute little wash stand. And then this is a nightstand, but I couldn't find the little drawers that are supposed to be on the front. But that's okay because there's these two nightstands. And then this is the hamper for the bathroom. This wardrobe I had assembled back in 2017, and I guess I didn't line it upright. And like this was supposed to be on the bottom, I think. Um, so you have to kind of flip it upside down to get it to stand and it also came with foiling sheet like foiled sheets you could glue to the back of like the wardrobe but they weren't included anymore. The beds which I haven't made bedding for at this time. Um, maybe I will in the future I'm not sure but we have lots of like fabric scraps and random doll bedding that works just fine. So all in all, I think that it turned out pretty good. I mean, this was my first time assembling dollhouse furniture. I know it's like not professional or anything and the color palette might not be to everyone's taste, but um, since the house is mainly gonna be for like my Dawn dolls to use because they're the perfect size, I was sort of inspired by them. And if I was gonna have to spend like a long time painting each piece, I wanted it to be fun and Colleen agreed with me. So and this is my dollhouse, all finished. It's really loud, I admit, but that's what I wanted to do. I especially really love how the roof turned out. And it is super shiny because I did a bunch of coats with gloss sealer so that it would be easy to clean and would protect all of my work. And I did all of these flowers with acrylic paint pens as well because this is a huge area to do. I even did like the trim on the windows and I just went over where my dad had used Sharpie. And I did like paint all the window ledges, like top, bottom, sides, because my dad had, you know, obviously cut all of these out when he made the house and I wanted it to be clean. Sealed them up really well because they were all raw and they hadn't really even been painted well the first time. And I wanted it to look bright and clean. And then this is one side and I did keep my dad's hearts. I just went over them in purple to tie in the colors I used this side of the house which I actually um the first time I drew the flowers on it had been the last side I worked on in a day session so I was kind of like over it and I didn't really like how I placed the flowers so I ended up wiping them off um acrylic paint will come off with like water so I just scrubbed it really well with like a rag and some water and then redid all the flowers after patching up the yellow paint so it did make the process take a little bit longer but I like how they look better and obviously that was another reason why I sealed it because I don't want the paint that I spent so long putting on just to come off easily. And then this is the inside which looks so much brighter and cleaner. And I did like the underside. I spent a lot of time trying to brighten everything up 
to make it look clean and it feels really smooth because of the gloss sealer I used. So I thought I'd show you the house and furniture in action because Colleen set up a thumbnail. You can see here this is her dollhouse which is all like just wood colored and this is what the like very groovy furniture I put in it looks like and with my Dawn and Pippa dolls for scale. I really like how the furniture pops actually because this house is so, so dreary and dark. Um, so it kind of makes everything jump out and also because it's perfectly sized for my Dawn dolls and it's very groovy. And then this is my dollhouse all done. Also very groovy and you can see there's like more of the furniture in the windows. Like the dolls are using it so you could see like through. I had a very good time setting this up. And um, it's just very bright and cheerful and I love it. And I decided to include some before and after pictures I took for my Flickr just so you can see a side by side of what it looked like before and you can tell where I kept like my dad's designs. And on the roof there's actually still some of the pencil for the shingles visible which I actually really like the effect of that and I'm really glad his heart's kind of worked into my design. I hope you enjoyed seeing this makeover process. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are pictures of some of these things on my Flickr. Just check out my um, mini dolls album. You don't need a Flickr to view my photos. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.